Congressman Chip Roy from the beautiful Republic of Texas. Congressman, thumbs up on the ship lap, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. My wife, my wife approves. Of course, our, our house is a multi-year project and uh, running for Congress and being in Congress kind of slowed that down a little bit, but she's a very patient woman. Wait, am I to understand that you attempt, I'm sorry, the sidebar on our conversation here. Am I to understand that you attempted both a home remodel and a re-election bid at the same time? Do you like self-punishment? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, like I said, I'm a very patient wife. She really loves the, the 10 and a half acres we live on, which, as you know, under Texas law, allows us to shoot weapons and uh, do what we want to do on our own dirt. And so we're delighted to be out here, but it just means we've got a little work in progress on the House. There you go. God bless America. I, I got to get your response on some of this stuff, because I know that one of the things that has been so uh, that's been used by Democrats as accusations against Republicans like yourself is I guess you just don't care, Congressman, about all these hurting people in states like Illinois. But where was the concern for their elect? Where did the elected leaders have concern for these residents in the years leading up to this pandemic when they could have stopped the out of control spending and they could have had a rainy day fund like, say, Texas has? Yeah, I mean, they're so full of it. it, it it's hard to even know where to begin, how bad the blue states that are at the trough of the federal government begging for additional dollars to bail them out. And in, in the meantime, helping be a part of the entire democratic process to stonewall any effort, bipartisan or otherwise, to try to help move through this pandemic and get on the other side of it, and get our economy going back. They know full well this is all a political exercise. Uh, if you say that, by the way, people will say that you're calling the virus a hoax. I've had that happen oh, to me. Yeah. I've had some local leftists say, oh, if I dare say this is a political exercise by Democrats, I'm calling it a hoax. Of course not. The virus is real. It's dangerous. We've got to deal with it. But at the end of the day, we can get through it. Our kids can go back to school. We can go back to work. We can get our country back together if we're optimistic and do what America always do, does, which is put a man on the moon, solve polio, beat the Nazis. If we put the can-do spirit into what we're doing instead of the I can't do it. Yeah. You know, nine years ago this last week, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm. And I, I gave a speech on the floor of the House a week or two ago about this where I said, when I was diagnosed, I went to MD Anderson in Houston. I talked to my doctor. I said, what are my odds, doc? And he said, you know what? Your odds are 0% or 100%. I'm not going to give you a number. You choose. And I chose 100%. And it's, it's about damn time we get back to the American way of choosing 100%, that we're going to beat the virus, get our economy back, not let all these leftist, Marxist, blue state uh, Democrats who are letting their, peop their cities burn, letting babies get murdered in the streets, let uh, crime run rampant, destroying businesses, then come to Washington begging for money. I've had it enough. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of taxpayers have as well. I have to touch on something that you said because I'm, I'm still I'm so amused and also just kind of disgusted at this point by some of the the, re the refusal to acknowledge the nuance of of what you just said, because you can believe that the the virus absolutely have reasonable concern. I don't know anyone who doesn't have a reasonable amount of concern about the virus or the spread or the efficacy of certain things used to treat symptoms. But there's a difference between the reasonable concern about the virus and also concern for the perhaps lack of transparency from either certain entities or certain elected leaders or certain bureaucrats as to how quickly it actually spreads and certain other issues and also the severity of uh, the fatality rate and the severity of cases that's used to shut down entire economies, shut down businesses state by state, close schools, which also, as numerous health officials have told us time and time again, even in congressional hearings, I'm talking to Congressman Chip Roy, that that actually can contribute to just as much, if not a worse health problem as the pandemic itself. Even Dr. Fauci has said this. But the refusal to acknowledge that nuance that you were just talking about and instead just saying, well, you know, Chip Roy thinks that this is a hoax or Trump thinks that this is a hoax. That's so incredibly disingenuous and it undermines concerns that actual citizens have. And I kind of wonder, are these elected officials who are saying this even listening to us? Well, and importantly, all of those that want to throw jabs at us for daring to think logically and try to work through this and come up with a solution to solve it rather than just blanket operating out of fear. If I say, for example, I think it's political that when uh, President Trump says we need to send our kids back to school, the popularity drops 20 points because the Democrats on the left immediately say we're opposed to that mm. simply because the president said it. Is it not political? when they want to praise Governor Cuomo, Mayor de Blasio, for what they accomplished in, quote, flattening the curve in New York and whatever that looks like, 
and go after Arizona, Florida, and Texas when those curves are literally the exact uh, model that they showed in March of saying, hey, how should we flatten the curve and protect our health care system? Clearly, it's political. Give you another example. There was a school district that just announced in Massachusetts they're postponing school starting until when? November 4th. Look, it's so nakedly obvious what's going on in terms of trying to politicize this virus, and Congress is letting that happen. Why on earth are we politicizing a virus? I didn't see my 77-year-old dad or my 71-year-old mom between Christmas and July 4th because I was trying to protect them. I'm trying to take cautions to make sure we do what's right and protect families. Uh, but at the end of the day, I also want my kids to go back to school. You think I'm going to send my 10-year-old and 9-year-old to school next Thursday, and we're going back to school next Thursday? Do you think I'm going to send my kids back to school if I think it is not in their interest to do so? It, they are my number one responsibility. I promise you, I care more about them than any bureaucrat in Austin or Washington does. So I don't want to hear all of the preaching and all of the pointing fingers at me for not caring about kids. I'm putting my kids in school because I think it is in their best interest, in their mental health interest, and in the well-being of our entire society that we lead and we go forward. Absolutely. And I love that point that you made. No, parents are not going to endanger. My kids are going back to school here, actually, in just the next few days. Uh, we're, we're, if we thought, and, and we're talking about us as parents, parents who are there when our kids learn how to ride a bike, parents who teach their children stranger danger, parents who you know pour everything into their kids and we're not going to gamble that if we think that sending them back to school is going to in any way jeopardize their health or the health of anybody else. And the school reopenings have been made so political. One of the uh, one of the issues that I have seen very often discussed, and this really came into uh, came into view when uh, Gavin Newsom in California issued an edict where the schools there in California apparently are going to be shut down uh, for the remainder of the year. They're going to be doing the online learning, including, very interestingly, private schools. Do you wh what do you make of some of the of some of the arguments that there was a really good this was a really good time for school choice to be presented to the American public, and as a result of 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 really that common ground. We see this push from certain leaders and certain politicos to just kind of shut down schools, shut down competition. Do you give any validity to, to those concerns or those arguments? Because that's been – and in my community, I have to tell you, Congressman, that was the number one thing that was discussed, and this is going to sound silly, but on four different community Facebook message boards that have a minimum of 1,000 people each, that was the hot topic on all three of them. What, what, are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, gosh, I could talk for probably 20 minutes or an hour on this if we had time. But look, uh, you and I have both chosen to uh, send our kids to private schools, Christian schools, because we believe it's important for their well-being and their uh, ability to pray and to have God at the center of their schools and so forth. I grew up going to K through law school, public school. I never went to a private school my whole life. Neither did my wife. She was the daughter of a single mom. You know, I could go through my family story. There's no real money going back in my, the roots of my family. Uh, and at the end of the day, we chose this and we're scrimping and saving, trying to make it work and try to send them to that why? Because I want them to have that environment. And now I think to some degree the veil is being lifted over the public school system that some of us have been watching now for years, culturally uh, undermining the health of our republic and how our kids see our country. It's not about learning calculus, it's not about learning science. I mean, right. yeah, that's but it's really about who are you raising? They're my kids. I raise my kids. And I want a community that recognizes that and wants to work with me on that. The problem you're seeing is, is the public schools now see and the people that are beholden to the public schools see, uh-oh, they're on to the joke. You know, on Twitter yesterday, there was a, a, a teacher, teacher who was saying, hey, what do we do to try to keep making sure these kids learn what we know is important about social justice and all this stuff? Because now the parents see it and they might not yes. agree with it. Like, yes. They literally are saying it out loud. You can't believe it. It's not whispering. They're not like, doing it in the dark shadows of some coffee shop with their skinny jeans listening to some crappy music. They're actually saying it in public. They're saying it out loud. And it's because they're emboldened. And now you've got people like Gavin Newsom and you've got others that are trying to protect that. Montgomery County, Maryland, fairly famously, yes. notoriously, uh, were trying to shut down private schools because they know if we open that door, then we can show uh, how bad it really has been. And last point. I've joined uh, forces with Senator Rand Paul in the Senate. I've got a bill we're working in the House. I think we're introducing it today or tomorrow uh, that would allow those dollars to flow directly to the parents. Let the parents choose 
We shouldn't be funding these bureaucrats anymore and throwing dollars down this dark hole. Let's let the let's let the parents choose. It's like you guys knew that my birthday's next month. And so <laughs> you decided to introduce this legislation as like a happy birthday. I'll take that. Thank you so much for that. That I really, really appreciate my, my, that. My birthday, much, much higher than yours, I think, was uh, last Friday. So I was uh, celebrating it by driving a, a tractor back from my parents' house to my place in uh, Dripping Spring. There you go. Well, happy belated birthday, Congressman. Last quick question for you. What do you need voters? What do you need citizens? Everyone who's worried about the, the state of the economy and reopening. What, do, what does everybody need to be on guard for right now and helping out with right now? Well, I mean, the most important thing is we've never had a clearer choice than we have right now in terms of Democrats who want to run a Marxist agenda to destroy our country. I'm running on a simple campaign, and that is that I believe that we should stand up for America unapologetically. I'm not going to look backwards and apologize for our founding or or the ideals that we set forth that we as Christians know that we'll never fully achieve because we're flawed and we're fallen and sinful. But we know that we set the ideals so high that we're lifting the whole world up to try to achieve them. The very ideals that sent us to put a man on the moon, to cure polio, to beat the Germans, all of these things that we do because we fight for what is right and what is good. That's why we stand for life. That's what's at stake. The Marxist agenda. My opponent, Wendy Davis, is a radical leftist that would fit right in with Nancy Pelosi and all those that want to undermine America, send us backward, divide us by race, uh, not stand with police or law enforcement, Mm. open our borders wildly, have sanctuary cities, have drugs flowing across our border. Uh, have endless taxation, destroy our energy, uh, uh, you know, vibrant energy economy that has made us energy independent. of our right. Of That's where the left wants to go. Our job is to fight for America. Amen to that. Congressman Chip Roy, beautiful Republic of Texas. Good to see you, Congressman. Happy belated birthday. I know we're going to talk again soon, so keep up the great work. Thanks, Dana. ChipRoy.com. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good to see you. ChipRoy.com. Congressman Chip Roy.